Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. All right, and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast here on Blab. I'm your host, uh, Peter Ramoliotis, and on Twitter, I go as PD Beats. This is the podcast on Blab where we have digital dialogues about social media, sports, and pop culture. This is our first show of 2016, so I'd just like to say Happy New Year to all of our followers, and may your 2016 be full of great health and great success. So with the panel we have uh, this evening, we're going to be talking about social media. We're also going to be talking about social media and its relation to intersections with television. So I'm going to quickly introduce the amazing panel that we have this evening. So first off, we have actor. You might have seen him as he plays Julian Jerome on ABC soap opera General Hospital. We have William DeVry. William, welcome. Thank you, Peter. Nice to be here. No problem. And we we have director of media partnerships for Twi- Twitter Canada. We have Christopher Doyle. Chris, welcome. Thanks for having me, Peter. No problem. And we have co-host on Hometown Hockey on Rogers Sports. That we have Tara Sloan. Tara, welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. No problem. So this is you know what we uh, our usual routine on Pop Alternative is we uh, give our uh, followers um sorry our our uh, guests an opportunity just to give a brief uh, bio about themselves tell our followers just a little bit so let's start with let's start with you tara and open okay remarks. um okay well i guess uh career wise i guess that's where i'll start um i was a touring musician for a long time in a band called joy drop we were kind of in the states and in canada for about 10 years um and then the band broke up. I had a little bit of a solo career, did a show called Rockstar in Excess, and was a finalist on the show, but uh, rather than kind of further my musical career, I, it sort of propelled me into television, which is where I am today. And a funny thing is my very first TV job was at a, uh, on a show called Inside Jam uh, at a little station called Sun TV, which happened before Sun News Network kind of took over. And William DeVry was one of my very first guests. So you may not remember me, but I remember you. And so I... Jeez, that's crazy. Yeah. And so I actually... So from there, I I hosted breakfast television in Calgary for five years and woke up at three o'clock in the morning and uh, sort of started moving into sports. And now I'm on hometown hockey traveling across the country. And I go to Swift Current, Saskatchewan tomorrow. There you go. Oh, Oh. I'm so je- I am jealous. <laughs> I'm actually jealous. Yes, <laughs> it's gonna be very cold, but it's gonna be a great. Week. I, I was. T- I told you a couple of weeks ago, Tara. I remember watching a Rockstar in Excess because those used to be my favorite shows, and they also had the one with uh, Rockstar Supernova when they had like, that yep. super group. Those were great shows. They were. I, was, I think they were. Yeah. And then Fox had one too, the Next Great American Band, and it only lasted one season. It was like a, a rock and roll, like American Idol type thing. And mm-hmm. I, I wish there was more of those, but yeah, no, it's, I'm really happy to have you on and, and, and we'll get into it later on, but your transition from, you know, music and TV to sports and hockey is pretty interesting as well. So we'll, totally, we'll, yeah. we'll yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> but, so. we, can yeah, just talk, <laughs> we just talk all about rockstar and excess. I was, <laughs> well. yeah, you could become yeah, the best podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So Chris, what about you? Uh, yeah. Opening you know, remarks. Yeah, just, you know, around 16 years in, in focus on media. And, um, you know, prior to joining Twitter, it was with CBC. I got to work on Hockey Night in Canada, the Olympics, FIFA World Cup. Um, and then now with Twitter leading partnerships, a really exciting time to be, to, be, uh, to be with Twitter and to be working with so many great partners um, across, across media and with a, with a big focus on a lot of sports events that I'm sure we'll get to tonight. Yeah, great. And... The best for last, or the best for last, maybe I don't know. Will I, I, that's not, that, no, I don't that's know. Not true. I'm gonna go with Tara on that one. No, no, you have an, an illustrious career background. I know all about oh, it. Man. I was just watching uh, My Little Secret. Oh wow! Video, which is actually really good. I, I was pretty impressed. Amazing voice. Oh, thank you. Uh, Tara, I'm so embarrassed. I, I don't remember that. Where Where was yeah. that that we did that? 
so it was, I think it really was one of my first interviews and uh, it was a little station called Sun TV, which was basically, it used to be, it was Toronto one at one point, And then it was just this little property that, that Sun Media owned and had to do a little bit of local programming just to keep it alive. But mostly we just reran like taxi and weird oh, shows really? like that. And I did an and, interview with you, huh? Well, not only that, we actually like the producer on the show <laughs> had us, we actually read like some soap opera script together. Oh, I mean, my, I would, I oh would, my God. Okay, that kind of rings a bell. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, does. you do oh a lot of interviews, God. right? Why would you remember? But it was a lot, it was like, you know, almost, it was probably 2007. Wow. Okay, I, I vaguely remember that sort of rings a bell, but I'm gonna, I'll wake up at like two o'clock this morning and go, I remember! <laughs> it exists anyway, somewhere, I can find yes. it. Anyway, Christopher, I do have a connection with you. I used to work with your boss at Twitter Canada, at CBC. Awesome. Uh, Kristen, right? Yeah, Kristen, yeah. Yeah, so uh, she was my boss when I did Insecurity over there, it was a half hour comedy. Anyway, I'm William DeVry. Uh, yeah, I'm presently on uh, General Hospital. I've been all over the TV world. I've been working for the last 20 years in TV and film and uh, live in Los Angeles now, born and raised in Montreal. A little uh, sidestep to go to college in Florida. And uh, now I'm in Los Angeles. So pretty excited to be here with you guys. I love, I love the, anybody that has anything to do with Canada. I'm like, yes, I'll do it. <laughs> I'm like you can see here. I'm like I want to go back. Yeah, no. <laughs> representing. Uh, Another yeah. thing too for our uh, viewers that are Netflix fans. Will was actually on a few episodes of the uh, the Netflix original Hemlock Grove, which I think is pretty awesome too. Because I the, uh, I first season. Yep. Yeah, I, I enjoy I enjoy the show. It was one of the first uh, Netflix originals too, as part of that. That first yeah. crop that they put out as well. So it know, was they... funny. I, I, I actually, they, when we were shooting it, they said, This is great. This is like a 13 hour movie. And I thought, Oh, that's wonderful. A 13 hour movie. Until the first five episodes, I realized that they, they forgot to like put a hook on, at the end of every episode to kind of keep you going. But they figured that out uh, by episode six. It ended up being a really good series and lasted three years. So that's pretty good for Netflix, which mm -hmm. I guess we're going to get into that stuff soon. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> well, I, I, the, like basically, so like I said in the, in the introductions, we're seeing social media is pop, pop turtive is a social media centric podcast. So we always try to have, you know, the first overall topic, social media um, focus. So we've seen social media as a game changer in terms of how we watch, not only watch TV, but also how we produce and create television as well. It's a really important medium. So I just wanted to maybe go around the panel, uh, and Chris, we can start with you. Just oh. uh, how, how do you think social media has changed in your eyes the scope of how we're watching television? Is there anything specifically Ooh. that you know, comes, comes to mind, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, at its core, um, you know, especially when you look at a platform like Twitter, right, or social media in general, it's a conversation, right? So I think it's it's made um, it's made a, what was previously a essentially a, a one-way medium, a, a two-way conversation. And I think that's what I find so exciting, you know, coming from traditional media side of things, um, having worked on, you know, in marketing and communications and then been on sort of like the content side. And seeing now kind of the opportunities to have a conversation with an audience. Yep. And I think, you know, what we're seeing uh, in terms of a shift to real time, right, and to live, um, how you can engage with viewers um, around content, I think. So I, I, I think the shift to live is really big. And then I think the other, the other way that it's changed is just your ability to, around whatever type of programming or genre it might be, to mobilize and galvanize a community and to have this shared experience, right? Um, you know, we talk about it um, with Tara, with 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 hometown hockey, and and you know it's the same for 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 scripted dramas as well. It's like we're having a shared experience, and we can all talk about the same thing at the same time. And so I think that's presented a lot of interesting uh, opportunities for marketers and for 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 content producers and for broadcasters, and of course for viewers. I think it's been a it's been a boost. Um, and curious to kind of hear some of the other opinions, you know, on how maybe it's impacted from well, from when 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 you were, you know, from before social media. You know, I'm curious, uh, Peter. I mean, Chris. Um, 
you know, when you when you when you're doing TV and you're doing TV shows and you're trying to put out a product and you're trying to tell a story, from your end, do you think it muddies? Say you have you you have an objective, or where you want to go, but then you get all these opinions that are just flooding in. Does it? Do you find that sort of takes you to forks in the road that you ha- hadn't anticipated because you do have so many opinions just coming at you like an avalanche? I mean, that's the problem with you know Twitter. It's almost like you you have to put something out there. But you can't necessarily listen to everything that's coming back because it's overwhelming sometimes. Yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, we talk at our shop a lot about um, voices of the crowd, you know, voices from the crowd versus the voice of the crowd. Mm. And that's where you get into, you know, yeah. you're exactly right. There's an avalanche of opinion. But once you take that, there's a lot of companies, smart people that, that put this stuff together where, you know, they're able to analyze the data. And now you're able to get a picture of, you know, of opinion or sentiment. Um, And I think that's what's really interesting because then you can take, um, you know, take a bigger picture, look at it. And, you know, I remember back when I got my start um, working for TSN and and my job was audience relations. I was just out of school, just having graduated from university. And this was back before, (laughs) sadly, before um, dating myself, uh, before (laughs) where really the internet was just getting started. And, uh, you know, we were taking phone calls at that time and we were logging them down. You know, we were logging people's opinions on, who wants to see this boxing match? You know, who wants to see a replay of, of this hockey game? And I remember um, they had a program at the time. It was like every every phone call we get is we're going to say that's worth a thousand people. Yeah, that was the way we 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 looked at it. And of course, ratings was the bible. Now you've got this instant this instant focus group. And I think to your point, like I think if you can you can smartly take a look at that voice of the crowd. But there's a, there's also a difference between. I mean, sometimes you know, having, for instance, you know, we're in sports, having a character who's kind of a contrarian and people don't like can actually be to your benefit, right? And I mean, I, I, will, I will never use any names specifically, but I mean, I, you know, on, a, on any given panel, I think it's good to have one, can I say the word shit disturber? You know, <laughs> like, it, because even if that person gets a ton of negative feedback, so it's also about, about telling the difference between you know, something that is really keeping people away or somebody or yeah. something that people love to hate. Oh, I think you have to definitely pay attention to, you know, opinions that you don't necessarily share, but then there's other people that are just, <laughs> uh, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's definitely, it's tough sometimes, you know, to take the, that negativity with, because there is a, there is a lot of negativity on social media. It's unavoidable. It's, you know, a lot of people are using social media um, and it's come up in other po- like episodes as well. It's, it's letting the little guy, um, you know, create yeah. its own identity and brand, right? We have a lot of people, you know, in, in well, hockey every- specifically. Yeah. Everybody's going to have a voice and that. Christopher, to your point there, um, you know, for every call that you got was sort of like, you can say, well, that's a thousand people, you know, he's speak, you know, it's interesting because, um, that, you know, that was the way it was back in the day when you'd get like a letter, you know, you, that was yeah. for every one letter, you had a thousand fans or whatever. Yeah. And so, uh, it's really interesting that you said that cause it still sort of applies in different, in different scenarios. Yeah. And, and, and we, 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 Tara, this is, you know, a uh, comment and a question for you mm-hmm. as someone, um, uh, we have comments. Some people can come in and have comments with us, like and and uh, have messages with us on the right side of of the blab. And someone talked about previously, like before social media, a lot of people were like were unreachable. So right. you know, rock, when Rockstar in Excess was on, you know, that was uh, like uh, that was before you know social media and all that. And mm-hmm. you know, that would have like you see with the Voice now, and you see with all these other uh, singing reality shows. There's a lot of, you know, um, there's a lot of activity and interaction that goes on. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it, it's, it, it's something that, you know, rocks, like maybe, you know, a lot of you on Rockstar in excess, you know, um, if you had, like, if you had social media, would have been like a completely different experience for you, right? Because, yeah, so I, th- it, I think about that a lot because, I mean, it was sort of the internet was just kind of dawning, or at least, you know, sort of forums were alive and well, and that's sort of how people were, were rallying. Mm-hmm. Um, and we actually were forbidden access almost entirely with the outside world. I don't think they do that on many shows anymore, but we were really sequestered. 
Um, so we didn't see any newspapers. We didn't have any computer access. Nothing. How long? How long did that last, Tara? Um, well, the the show was about three months. I lasted. I no. How lasted. long were you sequestered? <laughs> oh, about five weeks. Oh. Five, or six, five or six oh. weeks. God, uh, that's difficult. That's probably more difficult than one would realize. I would think it was very hard. It was like being in a yeah. It was a fishbowl. It was it was very weird, and it makes it harder to emerge. I think. Yeah. Um, but I do think about it a lot because, you know, I don't have a particularly thick skin and mm -hmm. I'm lucky right now that I work on a show that's just a really friendly show and, and we get, I mean, knock on wood, you know, we get very little negative feedback. It's it's just a yeah. show about, you know, community and, and yeah. nice well, things. You're, you're, you are fantastic. I mean, oh. it's like I watch it, you know. I watch all the Habs games down here, but obviously on Saturday night you guys are on uh, down here and uh, throughout the U.S., but you particularly do a fantastic job, I have to say. Okay. I mean, Thank yeah, you. totally. So I was excited to be on the show with you. Oh, thanks. But, it, you know, I – so, you know, if were I on a different type of broadcast, you know, I think I would feel a lot more negative uh, commentary on social media. Luckily, I don't. And I can see – I was – even coming out of Rockstar and Excess when I did, I mean, my dad, for some reason, felt the need to share with me some of the <laughs> negative comments. He was, busy, he was busy defending me. I was in oh no my way, God. I was in no way going to go back and read them. But, you know, <laughs> so I actually, I think it would have been, you know, on one hand, you could rally your troops uh, and kind of gain momentum on social That's media true, if it yeah. had existed. But on the other hand, the cruelty that I think uh, conversely could, yeah, I just don't think I would have, have done well with it. I think, you know, just judging from my show, I think the gals, like to your point a little bit, Tara, is that, you know, the gals are a little bit sort of less thick skin than the guys. The guys are like, whatever, you know, uh, uh, because they just get attacked a lot sometimes. And I think people just want, they want to, they want to, hurt you they do sometimes so there's a lot of good for social media but you know we, we still have a ways to go to weed some of that stuff out which chris is probably really interested in all that stuff well and you there know, are new, some new rules right chris like didn't yeah you guys didn't just brought out some new stuff some new guidelines yeah, that's right. I think it's, you know, one of the most important things that we're dealing with in terms of uh, making it a safe environment on the platform, a safer, you know, environment. And I think they've made a lot of changes in terms of making it easier to to report abuse, um, I think, as well as balancing the fact that it's a free speech platform, right? And mm -hmm. What I think is so interesting about the comment, though, is that uh, in terms of having the ability to connect with people who have previously been unreachable, like that's that's fascinating to me because we did actually did some research. We do we've done it around all different genres, but most recently we did around hockey, and we found that hockey fans were uh, they valued a, a social interaction. So whether it's like a retweet or a reply, as much or actually more than an autograph, and that was yeah. that was pretty striking when we saw that. It's like so there really is this personal connection, right? When I hear from a yeah. player, they. They, they like my tweet or they retweet it or they reply. Like, it's almost like, um, it's, it's again, kind of like the modern day autograph. And that is kind of interesting. Like it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's knocked down those barriers. Right. Whereas before, um, like you said, like I remember, um, you know, I was a kid growing up big, big Leafs fan and I wrote a letter to the team asking for an autograph from Rick Vive, who was a captain at the time. And I think a few weeks later, maybe a month later, I got, I got a, a signed photo back from him. And, you know, wow. now I can, I can follow these guys on Twitter and I can, yeah, I can in engage with them. Um, you know, I, I know there's a likelihood that they're probably going to see what I write. Um, right. You know, which is kind of it's kind of neat. Like, it, it really is kind of made. That I connection. do, yeah, you're right, Christopher. I do, and I do actually enjoy that. I, I do spend a lot of time on Twitter, and I do enjoy that yeah. facet of Twitter, no question. But we have, was, oh, sorry, Will. No, go ahead, Tar. No, continue your thoughts. I have a full. I, I was just going to say, <laughs> that, you know, I, I, there are a couple of people whose IP address just needs to be blocked completely. Because they create like 500 accounts and they just, you know, zero followers. And oh my God. Yeah. It's just like harassment and abuse. You just want to. Mm. Mm -hmm. A lot, I mean, of spam, a lot of spam. Yeah. Yeah. Just, they just, they just really want to get under your skin. And that uh, I wish, yeah. I wish for what something to be done about I, that. Tara, uh, uh, go over your thought and then I have oh. a question. Well, I was just going to say that actually, I mean, social media has become a huge part of hometown hockey, mm -hmm. um, you know, even from, from last season, which was our first season to this season. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the, I mean, you know, 
our show is so huge in terms of, you know, it's a festival and a market and, you know, I think things are sort of hard to quantify at this point, but. That's exactly what I was going to say. That's it. That's the thing. Quantify is difficult. Yeah. But I mean, I can tell you like last weekend we were in Thunder Bay and, you know, we had uh, the, the biggest attendance I think we'd had, um, you know, and the, the interaction on, on Twitter um, has become, you know, it is, it's, it is reaching the unreachable and the people, you know, the community interaction was so massive and you're able to, in the moment when somebody says, go to the, did you go to the Hoito in Thunder Bay? You can say, yes, I went to the Hoito in Thunder Bay and it is so immediate. And I do have enough time throughout the course of the show to, to, you know, make sure that I interact. And so it's, we actually have, you know, a team of social media people who come on the road with us because it's become that important. How big is uh, that team, Tara? Well, I know one of them, Kaylee Sibley. She does a fantastic yeah. job. We have two, we have two Shout women. Out. Shout out to Kaylee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Kaylee, um, Kaylee uh, is sort of on the sports net side, but we have two hometown hockey girls, um, Katie and Story, and they, they alternate weeks. And, I mean, their weekends are entirely devoted to, you know, social media content. And uh, they're incredibly busy creating other content that lives independently of hometown hockey. Sometimes wow. you know, it's, it's a way full-time job. I was going to say, I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. it's a special, special skill that these people have, honestly. I mean, hey, Peter, before you go on, I know you probably have a thousand questions. Tara, um, uh, hometown, uh, the, the Craft Hockey Canada has been going on for years and years. Yeah. It's fairly new in the States, right? I just kind of have seen it recently. How Do you know anything about that Craft uh, USA thing that they've been, you know, $150,000 to the winner, yada, yada? What do you, what no, do you know? I don't know about its sort of U.S. life at this point. I mean, yes, it's been Craft Hockeyville and, and yeah. the sort of donation of money to a, uh, a certain market where people vote. Um, it's been going on forever. And I would say that that's sort of a model for hometown hockey. We just happen to do it every weekend. And it doesn't come with a large donation, but it comes with a big infusion of other kinds into the community. I, I think it's a great, great project. And and you have to get me on your show one day on uh, Hockey Night in Canada. Uh, oh, well, uh, I will do my best. I don't know why they would Because I, yeah. I know you have all the pull in the world, Tara. <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet Strombo knows who you are. A strong, I've met Strombo before. I'm yeah, sure. we've, met, we've met. All right, uh, go, Peter, Peter, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, now, yeah, so... He lives around the corner. He has a house around the corner from me here in L.A. Oh, yeah. yeah. Really, he does. Yeah. Up in Hollywood he, Hills, yeah. I really, I want him on Pop Turnative. I've, I've spoken to him a few times. Uh, he, I met him at a few events. I used to do a lot of volunteering uh, at the NHL. So when the All-Star game was in Montreal, I met him, and he was so kind and, and awesome. Our little, We had our little photo runner group, and he was just giving us a lot of advice because we were all into journalism and communications at the time. So it was pretty cool to talk to someone. Uh, and and it, it's, it, it's pretty cool, too, that, you know, we all brought up, you know, uh, social media's ability. Like, it offers a lot. There's unprecedented amount of opportunities in terms of people making a name for themselves and making their own account. But the one thing I also want to talk about specifically is, like, live tweeting because the live tweeting aspect, you know, we've had uh, cast members of The Bachelorette on the show and The Bachelor had their season uh, premiere uh, a couple of nights ago. And my the amount of followers on my feed that live tweeted The Bachelor is insane. It's crazy. Oh, it's crazy. And you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say specific names, but a lot of people were live tweeting the show that you wouldn't expect to live tweet <laughs> the show. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, I it bet. was it was insane. So Chris, you like working with Twitter, how like what like take us through, you know, the process of you know when when you guys have projects where you, you have to monitor and you know track activity and trends. Take us through what specifically you're going through when you're you maybe on your personal account looking for what's happening, saying, hey, that's pretty cool. Maybe we can use this for something in terms of data. Like, like uh, you're involved with, with like, you're, you're probably really included in terms of when a show is, you know, on. And you, you see all the tweets in your feed, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's interesting, you know, it's, um, Twitter maybe wasn't necessarily designed to be, you know, the ultimate second screen for when you're watching television, but it's certainly what it's turned into. And uh -huh. that's certainly what it's great at. And I think it goes back to, like I used to say, 
you know, it's like this shared living room experience, right? Like it doesn't matter where you are around the world, yep. you're watching the show, it's happening live, you can have this conversation. And I think what I've noticed, even before I started working at Twitter, I noticed this is like I, my viewing habit changed where I, I couldn't watch something without having my laptop open or without having my phone by mm-hmm. me. And then it's just natural to see, well, are people reacting to what I'm watching the same way that I'm reacting? Like, do they not like this? this contestant or this character or what do they think about that call in the game? Like so I'm naturally just going following along and I find myself now even, even, even reading my stream um, uh, or if you know, following a hashtag, even as much as I'm, as I'm watching. And what we found at Twitter, which was really interesting and, um, is that it's actually an even more engaged audience. And um, th- that's again, really, really interesting um, even for marketers too, because it's, it's like you're going to retain more of the content because you're, you're so engaged in it. And one of the shows that, that really, did it really, really well is uh, is Scandal, and oh, how they incorporated gosh. hashtags into the show, and Ooh, the cast was tweeting yeah. along with it, and um, you know you see this happening now where casts of the show are, are are live tweeting things, and it's one of our best practices in terms of how to grow followers and how to grow engagement. Um, is that um, you know you have people live tweeting along with the show again? It's this experience we're all in it together, and we're all yep. watching something at the same time. It's, it's pretty neat. I- Hey guys, uh, Peter. We probably should uh, reintroduce just quickly uh, everybody, since I know we have a new a bunch of new people watching the show. We might want to just reintroduce everybody really quickly. Sure. I'll let you yeah, do that. Absolutely. I'll let you go. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, so yeah, for everyone who's tuned in right now, welcome to Pop Turnative. We're just talking about social media and television. Uh, we have uh, Will Devry from uh, ABC General Hospital. Will, welcome. Thank you. And we have Tara Sloan. We have Hello, Tara Sloan from hometown. <laughs> Tara Sloan from hometown hockey. Whoop, whoop. And my we favorite, have my favorite show. <laughs> and Christopher Doyle, director of media partnerships for Twitter Canada. So if you missed uh, anything, well, first of all, just just to let people know too that we these are all actually recorded episodes that will be posted on the Pop Turnative YouTube channel on the weekend. So if anyone missed anything, they'll be able to rewatch it, and I put them on SoundCloud as well. Uh, and we're this is we're talking about you know live tweeting and very quickly, um, Chris, what you were talking about, I wrote like my master's research essay at Carleton University, fellow Carleton. alumni. Yeah, yeah. Fellow alumni. Go, go, go Ravens. Go Ravens. <laughs> Won the Panda Bowl yet again. Panda Bowl, Panda Bowl. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, I did my, my, my master's there in communications and I wrote about the LA Kings and their social media and NHL fan engagement. And what you were talking about was second screen consumption and do and prosumers, you know, uh, it's a term that you know not many people know when they look at it right away, but it's this concept that we have our phones with us while we're watching TV, and our phones are the second screen. So it's like we're not just watching the show or the hockey game; we're watching our Twitter feed and everything. And you know, when we were ta- or when you were talking about the hometown hockey social media team that comes on the road, that's what they're doing. They are dual viewers because they have to you know watch what's happening with you and Ron and everything and the games. But they're also looking at the tweet deck and Hootsuite, like what I do at the Quebec yeah. Mayor Junior Hockey League. It's a completely different experience. Well, and I and I, it's not just. And, you know, it's not just in addition to, it's also, you know, the extra content I think has become also really, really important um, behind the scenes, giving people who are on Twitter something a little bit uh, different in addition to, you know, letting them feel a little bit more like a fly on the wall. Uh, you know, I just, I don't think you can provide too much at this point. It's just, I don't know. I, I feel a little bit, just to provide a little bit of it, sort of being a devil's advocate though, I am... Yep a little alarmed at the amount that I kind of rely on my second st- uh, screen, you know, like, I mean, you know, when I've got a hockey game on and Habs game is on right now, you know, when we're done, I'll continue watching that. I mean, I'm, which I'm, I'm, which I'm missing. <laughs> <laughs> it's out of the corner of my line. I'm trying not to pay attention. I feel but, bad now. Well, great. But, no, but I'm a little <laughs> alarmed at, at, you know, my lack of, of, you know, attention at, this point in my life like i can't just watch one thing isn't that true though i uh, yeah I, I hear you there's a lot of distraction uh these days certainly mm-hmm. and uh christopher I, I have to ask you um twitter i feel has so much potential and i don't think it's quite figured out how to grab that potential because you know they especially if you are a buyer of the stock and you're sort of a long-term shareholder 
you kind of like they're still trying to figure out how to grab that audience there's uh, you know we talk a lot about new monthly users and all that because i think it is the best platform but they haven't quite figured out how to sort of um get that market share i guess or or quantify quantify what they're going to do with the future or exactly i haven't quite figured out exactly where the future is for them yet have they you know what's interesting what tara was saying about just the distracted viewer and, and kind of multitasking and what we're finding is that um it, it's actually become a quite natural behavior and especially for like, i know I've, I've got an 11 year old daughter and mm -hmm. it's amazing how the way that she consumes uh, content, I guess, is like is so different than from when I when I was growing up. Um, and I've noticed that like it comes so naturally to her to be just you know constantly on different screens. And you know, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. to your point earlier about kind of the content that's being created, even for something around hometown hockey, it's like um, you know at her age group and even older. Um, you know, I guess that millennial group we talk about all the time. It's like they're probably just as likely to to catch it on a social platform as they are on, on the main screen now, uh, which yeah. is which is really interesting. And I think too, it's like I, other, other emerging platforms too, like Vine and Periscope. And, and mm. you know, it's interesting how well, videos become more. more, more we, use, more we use Periscope a lot. We yeah, use you Periscope been, quite a bit. Really yeah. good. That would, good, good. that would be good for you guys. That would be great for you guys. But I, very, very hometown very, hockey. Yeah, Very quickly, I just want to put something in that I think you all get a kick out of because we're all hockey fans. Uh, so I do work with the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, and a couple of uh, our players in our league are be, have become fans of the show. And we actually have Mitchell Balmas, who is a, a place for the Charlottetown Islanders, is actually tuned in right now. So woohoo, PEI, go for it! Yeah, and he's eligible for the 2016 NHL draft. They're he might go in the second or third round. They're projecting, you know, but I think he can. You think he might in the squeak first in the round. first round? He could squeeze round. in the first round. I, I think so, and he should be giving me a lot of props. On, 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 <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Prince Edward Isle, Island, I saw your uh, your your feed from Prince Edward Island frying the uh, oysters out there. I was like, man, I want to be there. That was about as fresh uh, as it could be. Yeah, no it must be awesome to travel to all these different cities, though, right, Tyra? It's really cool, and like you can make a lot of cool content too. You know, especially with Instagram, which is like photo mm -hmm. visually based too. It must be really good for that as well, right? It's amazing. I mean, you know, I think I have wanderlust as a touring musician. It's sort of just <laughs> fulfilling that in a slightly different way. Um, this year, I feel like I'm a walking advertisement, but I love I love the show so much, and I love what we've added to it, and I I, I think it's social media as a part of it. We've mm -hmm. added more of a community element, so that what you're talking about has nothing to do with hockey. What we did in Summerside PEI, we went, you know, we went to Malpec Bay, we went on an oyster boat. Has nothing to do with hockey, but it captured the essence of the community in a way that you know. You but that's everybody's background. That's where everybody was raised. Right. I mean, you know, that was their life exactly. within the hockey community. So it's cool. Yeah. So we had, you know, we found that that was a bit of an omission last year, and we wanted to just round out the storytelling. And so, yeah, I mean, last week I went for a sauna, sauna, and. Thunder Bay and jumped in Lake Superior. You know, it's, Ooh. I mean, I do, <laughs> it was, it was really cool. but I mean, you know, I, I, I get to do fun, I get to do fun stuff for this. It's very cool. I love too, like the, the connection like, way between hockey and music too. Like, yeah, how they've brought music yeah. into that show. And it's really interesting because there's a great crossover between that audience. And I think it's, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hockey, it seems, you know, sort of athletes uh, all want to be musicians and music, musicians yeah. all want to be athletes. Yeah. There's a, there's a mutual respect. And I think oh, there's some commonalities too. Some of my friends, uh, Monster Truck, do you, do you know that band? Yeah. They're from Hamilton. Their new record is very hockey influential like their their new song the enforcer has like a goal horn in the beginning and then it goes <laughs> into a really cool chant like it's i agree there is a link between hockey and music for sure i used to, i used to work in music too i used to be a concert promoter tara so i i booked uh you know uh ill scarlet wide mouth mason i used to book started as a 16 year old i was booking all these acts I was gonna say, was, when did this happen i, know, I, know. I, was I started i was yeah because i'm eight years old <laughs> I, 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 i'm 
24 right now. So, but uh, yeah, at 16 years old, I booked a Sony BMG artist in Montreal. I booked Ill Scarlet at the time, which I was those guys. Yeah. really cool. Yeah. And I booked all the much music disband bands. So, like these kids were crowns, stereos, all that stuff, you know. So it, it, it. I agree with that. That that link. Tara, I actually thought Tara that that all the actors wanted to be. Sport, sports stars and all the sports stars all the athletes wanted to be actors so. well maybe yes maybe that applies too yeah. well that's why i was excited to have you on we'll get into it but like that transition right tara from you know music to, to hockey specifically and this yeah. is it's specifically hockey right but you know chris because you know director of media partnerships that, that that's that's it's so awesome it's so exciting there's there's a lot going on and i really want i, I wanted to you know talk about that specifically you know in terms of um like how do you go by you know like how does that work go by creating partnerships with other media organizations like what type of of partnerships happen there in terms of you know and and it does i'm sure have to do maybe sometimes with you know television specifically but how does that go yeah it's it's really an interesting time to be doing what we're doing so essentially we're we're like the content people for the platform so we're working with broadcasters and um you know, on-air personalities and, and celebrities, politicians, athletes. I'm really just helping them get the most out of these emerging platforms. So yeah. we find that there's a lot to navigate. Um, it's yeah. often not the core job or the core responsibility of the people that we're talking to. Oftentimes yeah. it is. I think we find like a lot of times places are um, they're short on resources, so we're able to come in and help them. But essentially it means like here's how – here's how these platforms work and here's how to get the most out of each platform. Okay. And they, they do different things, right? So, um, you know, so there's really some really uh, interesting examples. Like we, we did a lot, do a lot of work with Roger Sportsnet um, and, you know, whether it's, you know, taking a property like, like Winter Classic or, or All-Star and you know, it was coming up and, you know, it's how we're just empowering them how to, how to use the tools um, and making tools available to them as well to get the most out of the content for the platforms and we did some really neat stuff with the canadian football league up here too around gray yep. cup we, we did some stuff with vine uh for them where yep. we actually um we, we actually helped them produce unique content just for vine uh, which oh, is okay. six seconds of looping video uh, consumption platform amazing storytelling opportunities yeah i just fun I, you know i just feel like it's hard for me to find time to do create vines but i think vine is the most fun i think vine had a lot Ooh. of trouble though when instagram allowed you to put videos on as well though that was uh i i remember a lot of my uh friends were we were talking once about that how it was only photos on instagram but then they allowed you to put a video so i think that made there was a good competition there as well because they're the same length as well, like Instagram. Can you do weird. that same like weird? You can't be a, a, quite as creative with Instagram, can you? On the app itself. Uh, yeah, no, I think you're right about that. I think it's different about that. But I remember it was a game changer when Instagram uh, put video in there yeah. as well. Yeah, I can see that. Ooh. And uh, and will you know, I, it, like linking to you know what we were talking about before. I I I just wanted to know specifically the soap opera community on social media. What are, what are they like? What, what what's that? What's that like? They're honestly amazing. Uh, you know, probably the same experience that Tara has. Very positive. Um, you know, everybody's going to have an opinion, and you know, of course, in soap operas, you have a lot of uh, you're going to have a lot of um, couples, and people are going to be fan of those fans of those couples, or they're not going to be fans of those couples. Um, you know, I'm actually, yeah, and, and so you're going to hear about it. But I always get a laugh of, uh, you know, from people on, on Twitter that, you know, aren't fans of the couples and or are fans of the couples. But I enjoy it. I mean, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. And yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, there's so many areas that you can go to. But, you know, I sort of got it down to I just decided to go sort of quality over quantity because you've got Instagram and Facebook. And I just, you know what I just said for me? Twitter is going to be the sort of instantaneous um, uh, platform that I want to use on a day-to-day -day basis, a uh, minute-to-minute basis, if you will. And I spend a lot of time on there. So uh, mm -hmm. for me, the, the quality is better than the quantity. Are but, there ever – are there – oh, yeah, continue. Go, go ahead. No, just because uh, a big difference too, you know, uh, is – they're during the day, daytime, right? So um, it gets busy. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we trend a lot. I mean, we find that like when, when we're on the gal that I have my stuff with, if, if we have something significant on, it's pretty cool because we, we trend a lot, which is, you know, it's always really interesting when you can, when you can trend on Twitter. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. But, uh, 
Yeah, uh, it's 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 busy during the day. You know, when people start to watch it on the East Coast, you always know what's going on, and uh, that that I think that's what Christopher was talking about. It's just so instantaneous, and and that's the cool thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I I just found that really. Uh, I I wanted to you know ask that because I want to take advantage you know of having someone who's you know on a show that's in the daytime because you know uh, we we've had you know. JJ Lane was on the Bachelorette at Bachelor in Paradise, and that was, you know, the talk of the town in terms of, you know, eight, nine, ten o'clock at night. You know, everyone's ready, you know, with their their wine and their phone, watching that in the summer. But yeah, and 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 Tara, you know, that transition um, that we were talking about before, mm-hmm. you know, uh, from going into like music. I mean, music is 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 of course still a big a big a big part of of your life. You know, I see. You know, your your posts. You're yeah. You're you're doing. You're still somewhat active with with your band, correct? Or yeah. Was that really I mean, we broke a one time thing or nah. We broke up in two thousand two, but uh, okay. you know, you're couple... active. You're still active. No, but we're we're. Yeah. we're we're kind of back writing now that I'm back in Toronto. Aha! Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, you see, I wasn't crazy. I no, saw I something. Crazy. On, okay. Yeah. I saw like a like a little. Yeah. Okay. So, no, th- what made you wanna you know <clears throat> shift away maybe from music and go into hockey specifically? Like, well, I, you know, was there any? Yeah. Hockey? Was that by accident or by design? Yeah, that's where I'm really curious. That was a good yeah. Point. A little bit of both. I mean, you know. Um, I, when I was during my music days, I did off the record on TSM, which is not who I work for, um, about 25 times. And that was, you know, Michael was amazing. That was a time when they were just, you know, bringing all kinds of different characters together to create their panels. And I was sort of one of his go-to women. So I was, you know, Tara from Joy Drop, but I got to talk sports and I grew up watching hockey, you know, like crazy. Um, Mm -hmm. So I always said to myself, you know, I, you know, if I wasn't doing music, I'd love to be in sports in some way. And I actually ended up doing some web content for them back in the, you know, early 2000s, um, sort of behind the scenes and NHL awards just to create for, for their website. Uh, but never really thought very seriously about TV until Rockstar in Excess. And quite frankly, it was just because I think I was, I was the first Canadian kicked off the show. And so, um, I, I was, you know, ET Canada, which uh, Global was the broadcaster. So they came after me pretty quickly. And I sort of became their go-to Canadian to talk to about Rockstar. Um, and I, I discovered that I, I, I liked it a lot. And so when I was ready to make a transition out of television, or sort of out of music, uh, TV was a natural fit for me. Uh, the hockey thing, though, I, I lobbied pretty hard. I mean, I, I ended up um. posting breakfast television which is a morning show in calgary yep. and it just you know rogers owned city who i worked for and sportsnet and it's just a series of like you know somebody saw me and i expressed interest and then to get this particular job on hometown hockey though i i wrote a, a very impassioned letter um Ooh. because i liked the idea so much uh, Tara, of course, you know, we have to know. You were born in Montreal. You moved to Nova no, Scotia. You knew yeah. to, raised in Nova Scotia, which is yeah. a lot of, a lot of Hab fan, fans there. Then you moved to Toronto. So who's your team? I mean, if you if you were allowed to say who's your team is. Oh, I'm allowed. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm a Habs fan. I'm a oh, Habs okay. fan. I mean, yeah, I'm a Habs fan, born and raised. Three Habs fan and the Lone Leafs fan. <laughs> That's right. Hey, listen, you can't have the Habs without the Leafs, so it's cool. Yeah, true. Is it? But is it? Is it? Like, I, I mean, Will, of course, you know the answer. to This is yes, because you are a huge Habs fan. But I find that I grew up watching Montreal Canadiens, mm-hmm. but you know, working with the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. And you know, even watching the World Juniors, like Team Canada, I all, like I always want Team Canada to win. But you know, working in Quebec Major Junior Hockey League, becoming just like a hockey fan in general, seeing all these hockey players, you know, developing from all different countries, mm-hmm. I just love, like, I love, I love the sport, and like the like the fan actually kind of like left when I started working, right? You know, I, I, it, it was mm-hmm. like the fan. Does the fan leave you? Like maybe, maybe not like for for you, Will, but no. like maybe Tara, <laughs> like. Like well, now, you are a house fan. Tara's a better person yeah. to ask because she has no. to be somewhat unbiased. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Of it? Yeah, in some ways. I mean, there are some people, you know, where like I, you know, I met Gretzky for the first time a month ago, and I mean, they just—I think you can't help but be in awe of his accomplishments. And even 
it was the first time I'd seen Ron McLean kind of out Sean in terms of his popularity, you know, I mean, Ron is a beacon yeah. um, and he, he, you know, uh, you can't walk two feet with him, but Wayne Gretzky is sort of another level. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have to, you have to remain neutral. And I also have developed a great love for junior hockey. So yeah. I become, mm -hmm. I think more of a well-rounded fan. So do you but find others? Tara, Sorry, you, what? Yeah. I just wanted to ask you, uh, speaking of junior hockey, do you find yourself, uh, becoming interested in junior hockey because you want to see who's coming up the ranks and who's good. Do you, are you just sort of like basically learning your craft now? I think that's part of it. It really started when I lived in Calgary and I did some coverage of the Calgary Hitmen and I, I saw how, yes, both like how, how solid a game it is. I mean, junior hockey is, you know, it's exceptional hockey. And then you can also follow these players and, and yeah. it's really interesting. Absolutely. And, yeah. and Chris, you know, uh, the, Twitter, there, there's, there's, so there's a Twitter Canada account, but there's also the Twitter Sports Canada account as well. Um, is that a team? Like, who's is that? Is that you running some of those accounts? Is that a team at Twitter running some of those accounts? Because there is a lot of um, the, the the Twitter Sports Canada account is really active in terms of interacting with fans and whatever is being written, you know, with the, from like, you know, the Canadian perspective. Like, a lot of hockey players too, will, you know. I see a lot of interactions and retweets as well on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's our, it's our team, uh, the Twitter media team here in, in Toronto, and uh, it's myself and and Cameron, our comms lead, and and a couple of others. And yeah, really, um, you know, I think what it's there to do is to showcase a lot of the best practices that our partners are doing. And and really, again, I always like to say, Twitter is at the end of the day a conversation between people. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's having that conversation and showcasing a lot of the the great the great tweets that are out there really at the end of the day, quite simply showcasing a lot of the great stuff that's out there. So it's, it's fun, you know, during the events, um, you know, it's interesting you're talking about kind of, you know, having a love for sports and then I've been working in it now for like 16 years and um, you know, it is always kind of uh, you know, an eye opener for me and a reminder that you're, when you're doing something you love, it's not work. Right. So yeah. um, you know, when, when you're getting to watch hockey games and you're getting to talk to fans and getting to talk to athletes and um you know, folks like Tara on air personalities. It's it's a it's a pretty good day when you're doing that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Will we actually we actually have a question? Um, okay, uh, for, you, uh, for you actually. So, the question is: Mora West has a child uh, on the au autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. Have you been involved in advocating for the autism community since you've known her? Well, you know, not, I think just by accident. I mean, yeah, I do have some friends that have some autistic children, um, which is just seems to be this weird thing that has popped up and uh, nobody quite understands it yet. So I've, I, I did a, uh, a fundraiser in Montreal uh, a few months ago. I'm doing another one in uh, Paris, France uh, for autism uh, speaks. And uh, so, you know, I'm starting to learn a little bit about it. I mean, I, I don't think even pe people that have autistic children really understand because it, it's literally one day to the next. I mean, their, their child is fine at two and a half. I mean, just fine. And the next day they wake up and something's off. Mm -hmm. It's just that quickly. It's, it's really strange. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, um, I haven't talked too much about, uh, you know, with Maura about it, but you know, she's, she's a great mother and five kids and I don't know how she does it, <laughs> honestly. No, I think it's really cool about this uh, platform. It allows, you know, people to ask like ask questions while we're on on air live and uh yeah i know it's it's it sometimes when 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 i first used blab it was actually hidden in a little corner and i realized right after i went off air one of the episodes with craig button from tsn uh mm -hmm. we missed all these questions so i was like oh no like and they were great questions <laughs> but i think it's uh, i think it's time to to, to wrap it up uh to wrap up the the episode because we've been on for around an hour <laughs> but uh Thank you uh, for everyone that uh, tuned in. But closing remarks uh, from from our panel. Anything specifically that uh, you want to say, Chris, or you know, any accounts that we need to follow, or anything specific? Follow Tara and Will on Twitter. <laughs> amazing. amazing. What about the, what about the host and the host? PDB. <laughs> PDB. Follow PDB. PDB. Okay. I want to know where the beats came from, just because. Okay. Because of the music thing that you got in. Yes. So I played drums uh, all, um, all my life. My, my father, before he was a pediatrician, a doctor, was a professional drummer. So we had uh, drums in the house. He did a lot of uh, – yeah, Tower, he did some uh, – 
he did some session work a little bit with April Wine back in the day, and Frank Marino, Mahogany Rush, he played with him. Uh, so yeah, he he was around. So I always had drums. So I used to be in a lot of punk metal bands. So I uh, then went on a radio show uh, at uh, CJEP at Dawson. I had my own radio show. So I was DJ PD Beats because I played drums. Oh. So and it stuck. So I thought it, it became it became like my brand. You've so done I, you've uh, done a lot for a twenty four year old. I'll give you that. Oh, thank you. I I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm just trying to. I think you know what we what was brought up from all of you, especially Chris and Tara. You know, is the point of Popternative is all these cross per, like promotions and intersections between you know sports, pop culture, social media, and all that. That's kind of what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. That's why I love you know having different you know an actor on with you know someone who's a musician or someone that works in media partnerships for Twitter, and you can kind of have you know these different from they're from different fields, but you can have similar you know, discussions and have different, you know, perspectives. So that's what Popternative was about. I always want to start a podcast. So like this. I'm going to, I'm going to say that for everybody that's joining us now that they should go to YouTube, punch up Tara Sloan <laughs> and look for her video, My Little Secret, because it's a good song. <laughs> well, thank you for the ringing endorsements. And I'm like glad. And I think it's hilarious. We're, reconnecting even though you don't remember our first interaction but that's cool. yeah I'm, and, gonna, um, I'm gonna i'm gonna look that up i'm gonna look that up but it, yeah it was kind of before we, youtube but i'll i'll try to find a copy of it, it could have okay that'd be that'd be awesome yeah i'd love to see it yeah for sure we've actually we actually had about 600 live viewers for this episode which Very was fantastic cool. so yeah. and Kristen, I'm, I'm really happy. next time you see uh kristen uh tell her i said hello will do Perfect. Well, this has been Pop Turative. Uh, I thank you all for tuning in. Uh, next week, we will be back um, with a uh, discussion about uh, social media and broadcasting uh, and, and live live reporting specifically. If you follow us on, you can follow us on Twitter, Pop Turative, like us on Facebook, and you can catch uh, episodes that you missed on uh, our YouTube page. So thank you very much and uh, one Happy New Year to everyone as well. Peter, one more thing. I see a little yep. question here on monkeys from monkeys and at monkeys. Yeah, anymore. where did you get where did you get that sweater? Because I want to know too. It's a cool sweater. <laughs> Honestly, I just got it off uh, Am Amazon at uh, like uh, NHL hockey or something like that. You just find it online. On there, yeah. there was there the the red one, red C was sold out, and this was quite hard to find. The one with the white C, the classic, uh, basically. Yeah, this is the classic um, sort of jersey that they – Winter of the, Classic. Winter Classic is what I'm trying winter to say. Classic. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Well, so good luck to anybody that wants to find it because they seem to be sold out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.